All right. <clears throat> You're probably wondering why I'm staring into the sun the way I am. Well, it kind of goes along with the uh, topic of discussion that I wanted to have this morning uh, to kind of be illustrative of uh, the situation that I'd like you to see. Good morning. Yes, it is November 28th, 2020, and I'm squinting because I'm looking into the sun. Again, I'm doing this on purpose. It's not an accident because I want you to see what happens when light reflects off of you. That you are a reflection of the light. You are not the source of the light. It's a very important point that needs to be made. I've made it before in videos in the past about Hillel ben Shakar, which is the way he is named in Isaiah. And in the Vulgate, in the Latin translation, it became Lucifer. And so you look at Lucifer as his name when that's not. It's a description. It's an adjective of what this being is. And I explained in an earlier video, those of you who don't like scripture, if you'll hang on for a few minutes, you'll see why I'm bringing this up. In the description box below is a link to Dr. Michael Heiser's channel, uh, specifically a video on Eden, on what Eden means, where it was, what exactly transpired. Uh, to a certain extent, and most importantly, who the serpent was and what it means. And I have discussed this subject often in the past. I've given actual entire videos on the subject of, of the Nakash uh, and its similarity to the Messiah, the Mashiach, and those types of things. I've, I've often talked about that it was a metaphor for what happened, and, and because we don't understand ancient Hebrew and actually ancient societies, ancient civilizations, euphemisms, we often mistake uh, what it's saying. And uh, I was not aware of Michael Heiser. Uh, I, I was uh, a student under uh, uh, a prominent Dead Sea Scrolls scholar and a, and a, uh, a Jewish rabbi uh, and some other um, doctors in the field of biblical archaeology, history, etc. Uh, so I, this, the, the first time I heard about Michael Heiser was probably about two weeks ago, and I stumbled on it by accident. But in the description box below is this video that I'm discussing about Michael Heiser and Eden. And again, he's touching on all the same things that I have said but he does it in a much more entertaining manner, uh, especially because he's using not just uh, uh, you know his words talking, but he has uh, your your graphics, so you can kind of see, uh, especially across several different scriptures, how all this is all tied together. So in the past, I've talked about uh, in the Kosh about Hillel ben Shakar that that it was a symbol for a being, not a beast, not a real serpent. Uh, but but Michael Heiser explains what cherubim and seraphim are, and those of you who are into Semitic languages knows that a, know that a seraph is a is a serpent of sorts, but not in the beast sense. Uh, and and he, and I also explain that Hillel ben Shakar in the name Hillel ben Shakar is not that he is luminous in and of himself, but that he reflects light and he can he can appear as an angel of a source of light, but he is not. He merely reflects the light. And I've talked about that. Those of you who have followed me know exactly what I'm talking about. So Dr. Heiser here gets into uh, the idea of this, this serpent being in the Garden of Eden and where it's really located, where the garden really was and all of that all in the metaphor, and talks about how this was a rebellious being that was like brass. Many, many divine beings are like brass, but they don't have light in and of themselves like God does. They reflect God's light, or they try to, like I'm doing now with the sun. If I, if I turn the sun away, I'm no longer in I'm not, now I am not receiving it. There's a little bit here, but you can see the difference. I'm not luminous in and of myself. But if I want to fool you, if I want to deceive you, I will reflect the light 
You see how that works? Well, that's exactly what Hillel ben Shakar, who you know as Lucifer, did. So, I don't want to take a lot of time here this morning. My real objective is for you to go and listen to Michael Heiser in the link below. It'll show you exactly what I've been talking about uh, biblically and historically for, for many years now, ever since I finished my study. And uh, I, I think that he does it in such a way that you'll find it not just informative, but somewhat entertaining and a little revealing about ourselves. Why did I say that, uh, you know, in the title of this, I talk about the Shining One and the Light Lords. Uh, if you listen to Monograph ch Monograph's channel, uh, he often talks about the Light Lords. And, of course, the Light Lords are those who are heading the New World Order and trying to lead us into a new evolutionary track, right? That's really what it's about. That's what, that's what this character, Hillel ben Shakar, Lucifer, did uh, in Eden, or in the councils of heaven, as uh, Dr. Heiser explains, that uh, he wanted to derail God's creation of mankind because mankind, he didn't think, was uh, good enough to, to be like God, to, to, to have the experience that would elevate God's creation. And so uh, this, this being, however you want to, to, to look at him, and again, I, I reference Michael Heiser on this, and it, it really verifies everything that I've been saying about this uh, in my own study. Michael Heiser verifies it, uh, and, he, and he lists some other uh, PhDs, doctorates that discuss the same thing. But the Light Lords are, remember, the story goes that, that, that Hillel ben Shakar Lucifer, tried, the, the Nakash, and he'll explain what that Nakash is, this bronze serpent, this bronze divine being of, of, of extreme intelligence. Uh, he, these, this derailment, this interjection of a different seed into mankind was the way this being was going to interfere with God's plans for mankind. Well, However you want to view that, God used it in order to put us into a school so that we could learn good from evil. But Lucifer thought he was going to derail that, when in fact what he did was he helped it along. So what's happened now, and I've talked about it before, is that, that this beings, the, the, the people, the, the, the fallen angels that went with him, uh, we're able to propagate, and we can understand that from the scriptures themselves. I'm not going to get into it all here. A lot of people want to argue that angels can't have sex and all that. That's not the issue. The issue is, is that at least in this discussion, the issue is, is that this being wanted to use mankind to subvert God's plan, to stop mankind from from being in the image of God, and and to inject a DNA into mankind that. He was presenting to mankind as a way to become like God when they already were. They already had the blessings of God. They were already being placed into there, and this, this fallen being tried to interfere with it. Well, we saw the same thing in the Garden of Eden, right? And then you see it again in Babylon with Nimrod building the Tower of Babel. And I'm going to have my son on one of these days who has a very good understanding of this whole thing with the Council in Heaven and then the Babylon and the Tower of Babel and the confusion of the languages and all that. He's very good at it, and I think you'd, be, you'd enjoy hearing him talk. But we saw that thing happen then, right? Uh, and, then, and then I'm just going to run forward. There were a lot of other times in history and in Scripture where that's happened. But in the present day, these light lords... Who, who are really uh, a multiplicity of this Hillel ben Shakar, a, a reproduction of Hillel ben Shakar, who thinks that they should take charge of mankind's evolution, both physical and spiritual. So they're doing the same thing to us today. They've been working us towards this, this rebellion against the order of heaven, against the way we were created and what we, and what and why, what we were created for and why. We're seeing it play out. The Garden of Eden story isn't over yet. It's still continuing. The war in heaven didn't happen. It's happening. It's still going on. And these light lords, people like this Schwab character, right, Who's, who runs the World Economic Forum, Soros, 
the Rothschilds. Everything that's going on now, they want to recreate us in their image, in their God's image, who is Halal ben Shakar, the Nakash in the Garden of Eden, which was really the Council of the Gods. By the way, Michael Heiser actually talks about the word Elohim not meaning God, but gods. And he gets, it's really interesting because I've talked about these things and a lot of people have wanted to argue with me about it when I was giving it to you from the Hebraic viewpoint, what's in the Hebrew. So we're seeing the war in heaven. We're seeing this thing act out right now. And the battleground is what? And there really is a battleground. A lot of people don't like the term the battle of good and evil because good God, in other words, there is no battle. He's going to win regardless. It, you know, he's using this to his advantage. And I understand that. But the battle is for our benefit. And that's the hard part to understand. So we have these very evil people like this Klaus Schwab from the World Economic Forum, Bill Gates, who have come up with this idea, especially in these vaccines, and this is why I'm so against Trump right now, because he's been pushing this. It's not a simpler injection. It's not a, a, a less dangerous soup. It's the same thing. And they're trying to force our evolution towards Halal ben Shakar, towards that being that reflects light, isn't a source of light, but reflects it to deceive you and take you away from what you were really created to be in the image of God and to be his children. So we're in this battlefield right now, and we have these evil men like Klaus Schwab. What is he saying? What is Bill Gates saying? What, what, is, what does uh, 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 Tim Cook say? And these types of guys. They're saying, we're going to merge with the computers, with machines. We're not going to be carbon units anymore. We're going to be units that are, at first, plugged into the AI, the new God, the one that reflects light, doesn't create it. And, and they're the servants of this thing and trying to push us into a situation <clears throat> where they can control us, where they can be our God. And we have to reject it. Whether you look at it from a scriptural, spiritual point of view, or if you look at it from nothing more than a, than a Hitlerian, Stalinistic, Maoist point of view, that they're just evil men trying to control you. They're trying to destroy mankind. And one of the, one of the initial attacks was on the man-woman relationship, which God created and which I defend every single day much to the chagrin and, and people that get upset with me because they think sin, that the original sin was sex between Adam and Eve, and it was not. It's critical that we understand that the image of God that we were created in was male and female. That's not a mistake, and it's not a sin. And the relationship, intimate and otherwise, is not a sin. But they're trying to make it that way. And all you have to do is look at what they're trying to push for. Transgenderism, unisex, and then eventually the entire destruction of the difference between men and women to make them into an androgen. And that's not what we are. That's not what we were created to be. That's not where we came from. And that's not where we're going. It's to destroy God's image. The masks. Or to just, I get so frustrated. I see people out here wearing these masks and they have no idea what they're actually doing. First of all, it doesn't work. But this is coming from the same people that want to destroy the image of God. Klaus Schwab, Gates, and unfortunately, Trump is assisting in it. Oh, yeah, it'll be a lot worse under Biden. I don't think Biden's going to get in. I think Trump's going to retain power, and I've already explained that. Okay, I've gone on long enough, 15 minutes. I want you to go listen to Dr. Heiser. It's a 30-minute video, and it's, it's really worth your while so that you can understand where I've been coming from in the understanding of the Hebrew and of the ancient euphemisms as compared to our current-day euphemisms, trying to use our euphemisms and our current-day ideas to understand what the Scriptures say. Michael Heiser does an excellent job, and I'm referring you to him. Now, the person that put up his video, uh, I'd subscribe to their channel if I were you. I just did. 
uh, because I think his information that he presents is very worthwhile. I've heard a couple of other of his videos, and he and I would have a, a professional disagreement on some of the things that he's presented, but not significant. They're not significant. And this video that you can see in the description box below right now is an excellent example of everything that I've been talking about, okay? You are God's creation. You are his children. You are in his image. Keep that as the objective of your life to reflect in a good way. Be the bronze and reflecting God in a good way. Not like Hillel ben Shakar does to deceive you into thinking that he, he is an angel of light when he is not. He's not self-luminous. And that's the one thing in this video that, that Michael Heiser doesn't quite explain. He doesn't explain that, yes, he's a shining one because he's like brass or bronze, but he reflects the light. He's not luminous in and of himself like God is or like you're designed to be. Okay? All right. Thanks, everybody. I thought that would be a good Saturday message, uh, Thanksgiving time, all that. And uh, I wanted to come out where I could kind of, again, show you. I'm not self-luminous, but I can reflect the light and fool you into thinking that I am. All right? Okay, everybody, out here I got to keep going. I hope you have a wonderful day. All right? Go watch that video for 30 minutes. You'll, you'll be glad you did. You'll, you'll have a new understanding of the things in a much better way that I've been talking about. Okay? All right. Out here for now.